Welcome to the Skeptic Zone, the podcast from Australia for science and reason. Hello and welcome to the Skeptic Zone, episode number 449. Woohoo! 449. Almost 4.50, I suppose that means something. For the 28th of May 2017, Richard Saunders here with you from, ah, delightful Sydney, Australia. Uh, Not a cloud in the sky, not hot, not cold, very nice weather. On this week's show, we're going to look at the story just uh, in the last week. Now the movie Vaxxed, which we've uh, discussed on the show before, is currently touring New Zealand. Uh, Now why it is, I don't know. Why the producers don't make it free online so people can just watch it if they want to. I don't know. It is online. Anyone can watch it if you search for Vax, if you care to. But no, they peddle this this, uh, torrid piece of uh, pretend documentary around the regions in different countries uh, to drum up support. Look, we're daring to show you this. Come and see the movie. They don't want you to see yada, yada, yada. Anyway, so it's touring New Zealand. And we're going to bring you, via the Raw Skeptic Report with Heidi Robinson, the story of Dr. Lance O'Sullivan, who leapt up on stage before a screening of uh, Vaxxed to protest and uh, lay it on the line for those people in the audience of his views and opinions of this uh, wretched documentary and the harm it is doing. We have some of the audio of that, uh, that protest. And this is from a former New Zealander of the year. A protest in the name of science and reason to kick off this week's Skeptic Zone. Following that, an update to the story we brought you last week of the little boy who was uh, uh, rescued by the authorities from his parents who uh, didn't seem able or willing to provide him with the uh, proper uh, care he was in need of. And there are storms of protest and all sorts of conspiracy uh, theories and cries going on. We'll just bring you up to date on what's happening with that story. And to stress, we do not name the people involved for legal reasons. I know laws differ from country to country, but in Australia, if the court says that you cannot name people involved in a case for various legal reasons, well, that's sort of what you do. Then it's brouhaha from AustraliaScience.tv this week with Casey Harrigan and an interview with Casey Harrigan. We catch up with one of the brouhaha team, Casey Harrigan, who often appears on the Skeptic Zone. We're going to find out what she does at the the Australia Science Channel, how they make brouhaha, how they choose their stories. A great little interview coming up later on with Casey Harrigan. Also this week, a little report on the... uh, Mind, body, wallet. Oh, yes, I swore I'd never go back. Well, I didn't, but I've gone so many times now. <clears throat> so uh, uh, together with some of the stranger things down under our Facebook group here in Sydney, we venture, venture down into mind, body, wallet. And this year it's in a new venue in uh, Darling Harbour in Sydney in a new exhibition centre, and you go down down the escalators, the long escalators, you descend into the bizarre realms of mind, body, wallet. A little report about that coming up a bit later on. Then to round off the show, a little update from the Australian skeptics about uh, some worrying uh, chiropractic advice or uh, a technique which looks like it's being recommended by the chiropractic authorities. It's all about uh, trying to change positions of babies in the womb. It's um, uh, You'll hear about it later on to round off this week's show. It's called the Webster Technique. Now, over the last couple of days, I've been doing a lot of walking. I've been doing some work down in uh, Darling Harbour here in Sydney, which requires me to do a lot of walking. I won't get into that. And I was in need of something to listen to. Of course, there are endless uh, skeptical podcasts. I can recommend uh, The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, Skeptoid. I never miss an episode of. Uh, there's uh, the, our friends at Skepticality. There's uh, the European... Oh, look, it goes on and on and on. Hello, Michael Marshall. Hello, everybody who does skeptical podcasts. Geo. <gasps> there's so many. But what I did recently was I 
downloaded all the videos made by Dr. Harriet Hall, which we advertise frequently on The Skeptic Zone. You'll remember this. Dr. Harriet Hall, MD, known to thousands as The Skeptoc, a retired family physician and former Air Force flight surgeon. She writes about medicine, so-called complementary and alternative medicine, science, quackery and critical thinking. Harriet now has a free course, a series of 10 video lectures on science-based medicine and alternative medicine. The videos and an accompanying course guide can be found by following the link at skeptoc.info or by visiting web.randy.org slash educational dash modules dot html. I converted all those videos to mp3s, loaded them into my iPhone and away I went. Now, Occasionally, Harriet will refer to charts and graphs and pictures and things like that during the videos, but not often. And in fact, you can glean uh, just about everything from simply listening to Harriet Hall give these lectures, and they're really good. And I think my aim is now to watch them or listen to them at least once a year to refresh myself. Uh, Lots of good advice, uh, lots of grounding in good science there from Harriet Hall, and uh, I understood a lot more after watching and listening to these uh, uh, these uh, this series of videos, and now for me anyway, audio. So I can thoroughly recommend those, especially after going to Mind Body Wallet. Well, that's enough of me at the moment. I'm going to uh, run downstairs. I'm going to get a packet of chicken soup and mix it. I know, I know, this is pretty daring stuff. Uh, You better take the children out of the room right now. I'm going to mix it with a packet of pumpkin soup. Mm Mm-hmm, I know. I'm going to add a few chili flakes on top. I'm going to toast some sourdough bread, a little bit of butter on that, and uh, happily feast on that while you feast on the Skeptic Zone. Skeptic Report with Heidi Robinson. Hello everyone, Heidi Robertson here from the Northern Rivers Vaccination Supporters. I do believe that at the end of my last report I said I would hopefully be doing another report soon, perhaps even non-vaccine related. Well, There were a few things going on this past week that were vaccine-related that should be reported on, so there goes that. Listeners have no doubt heard of the, air quotes, documentary Vaxxed. If you haven't, here is a quick recap, and I quote from a tv.nz.co.nz article that has reported on the story this week, quote, The film Vaxxed is a 2016 American film from anti-vaccination activists Del Bigtree and Andrew Wakefield. It was widely criticised by the scientific community upon its release, with various reviews saying it cherry-picked facts, relied on unsubstantiated claims, and used emotional pleas and context-free statistics to get its message across, end quote. Mr. Andrew Wakefield, as you recall, is the former UK gastroenterologist that first proposed a link between vaccines and autism with the release of a fraudulent study of 12 children that was later retracted by the journal The Lancet. Wakefield was stripped of his medical licence when it was revealed that he had manipulated data and performed unnecessary and unethical procedures on children including paying them money in order to draw blood from them at his son's birthday party. As an aside, Wakefield said he thought it was okay ethically to do that as it wasn't a payment of £5 each to the kids. It was a, quote, reward. Wakefield also stood to gain financially if he produced data that showed there was a link between the MMR vaccine and autism. 
he had already applied for a patent for a single measles vaccine in preparation for the ensuing storm that was about to erupt. And he had other competing financial conflicts of interest that were not disclosed at the time. And in case there is a skerrick of doubt in the minds of anyone, it is a fact that multiple studies in multiple countries covering multiple decades with multiple research groups using multiple research models and multiple funding sources have found no link between vaccines and autism. So, with Wakefield's history and reputation being, shall we say, less than stellar, it is hard to believe how anyone could take this, air quotes, documentary seriously. Okay, there is the background, which I'm sure most of you are already well aware of. However, seeing as the Skeptic Zone has new listeners all the time, I thought it might be important to repeat some of the facts. So, Vaxxed is currently screening in New Zealand. And in New Zealand, we have a Dr Lance O'Sullivan, 2014 New Zealander of the Year, who has emerged as a public health champion after what he did during the last week. On the 24th of May, 2017... And I quote, again, from tvnz.co.nz. Dr. Lance O'Sullivan interrupted a controversial screening for anti-vaccination documentary Vaxxed in Kaitaia last night with a passionate speech telling the organisers they are contributing to deaths before performing a defiant haka, end quote. Now, the haka, for overseas listeners who may not have heard about it, is a traditional war cry of the Maori people of New Zealand. If you're a fan of rugby... You may have heard the New Zealand team, the All Blacks, performing the haka at the beginning of their matches. And if you haven't, I highly recommend you Google it and watch it. The haka has evolved since to now have several different meanings. One of these meanings is a triumph of life over death, which is quite appropriate given the content of Dr. O'Sullivan's statements to the people that attended this particular screening of the, air quotes, documentary, Vaxxed. Continuing with the article, quote, Dr. O'Sullivan was invited to watch, along with a number of other health professionals, but took the chance to step onto the stage and share his views on the topic. He said there is absolutely no evidence vaccines cause autism and he is concerned for his community because immunisation is safe and extremely important for children. I, uh, I've come here not to watch the film. Oh, why not? Not to watch the film, <laughs> but to continue my battle and my challenge for my people, and importantly, for our children. Tamariki Mokuma. And uh, I said in my corridor, I said I come here with a lot of anger and a lot of iariri, uh, pukuri. Um, and uh, that's because I am adamantly opposed to this, because this position... This idea of anti-immunisation has killed children around the world and actually will continue to kill children who are, whose parents have put off immunisation because of misinformation. Misinformation based on lies, quite frankly, by fraudulent people for their own... The article continues... Dr O'Sullivan has since been criticised for his actions on social media with the Warning Against Vaccination Expectation Group, a.k.a. WAVES, who posted, quote, Trisha Cheel, the event organiser, was verbally attacked, bullied 
and threatened by Lance O'Sullivan at the vaxxed screening last night. Dr Lance O'Sullivan came into the cinema under false pretenses of watching the movie. Lawrence Backus, who works with intellectually handicapped and high-needs people at Hawke's Bay, wrote that Dr Sullivan is a farmer whore and a disgrace to his profession, before adding, New Zealander of the year, my ass." End quote. Dr Helen Petusis Harris works at the Immunisation Advisory Centre in New Zealand, is a senior lecturer at the University of Auckland, and has a PhD in vaccinology. She was quoted in an article on newshub.co.nz on the 25th of May. Quote, The community needs screenings of the manipulative pro-disease film Vaxxed like a kick in the guts. End quote. And, quote, While Vaxxed is a film that will appeal to people who believe that the moon landing was filmed in a Hollywood basement and reject the warming of the planet as a fact, it will also scare good, decent parents who want to do the best for their kids. This is what makes the whole thing stink so badly. The promoters are so despicable that they even targeted Somali refugees in a community in US Minnesota with devastating consequences. Now there is a measles outbreak and kids are in hospital. This is not really what we want in our New Zealand communities. I do not believe that showing the film represents free speech because all over the country the organisers have done everything in their power to prevent any challenges with covert screenings. At Auckland, the organisers began by issuing a warning to the audience that if they wanted to make trouble, they had people posted throughout the theatre, end quote. She goes on to say, The film in question has as much scientific fact in it as a B-grade zombie film. Yet, it is so manipulative, it manages to persuade people that its insidious messages are somehow true. End quote. And further on in the article, she adds, Lance said babies will die. He is not extremist. It is true. The impact of the anti-vaccination movement has been documented for over 200 years. The consequences of the recent activity against MMR vaccine have included deaths from measles. It is purely a numbers game. About one per 1,000 cases will die. The last outbreak in Auckland, 23% of cases went to hospital. Which case number will be the one who dies? The outbreak cost untold millions to manage. The world is trying to eliminate measles, a major killer. The people who promote vax are trying to thwart the efforts. Does this make them pro-measles? Well, yeah. And again, later in the article, she says, quote, It must also be highlighted for the millionth time that Andrew Wakefield, the director of this film, falsified data, lied, performed invasive painful procedures on children without ethical approval, and did not declare massive financial conflicts of interest. He has lost his licence to practice medicine and remains unsupported by any respected expert in either vaccines or autism. End quote. This is not the first time that Dr O'Sullivan has stood up publicly and condemned the anti-vaccination crowd. In an article by the New Zealand Herald last month, referring to the upcoming screenings, of the air quotes documentary Vaxxed, he was quoted as follows. I would really like to know what it is they need to hide, he said, adding that Waves New Zealand, which described itself as a charitable organisation, was not a registered charity. Is it the fact that the director of the film, Andrew Wakefield, is a discredited scientist? End quote. Wakefield's 1998 Lancet research had been described by Dr Dennis K. Flaherty of the University of Charleston as having created a public health crisis. He called his publication, quote, the most damaging medical hoax of the last 100 years, end quote. And from the same article, Dr O'Sullivan again, quote, Last year's measles outbreak in the Waikato, where 71 of the 89 victims had not been vaccinated, is a good example of how a preventable disease can take hold in a community, 
he said, calling on Waves New Zealand to, quote, come out of the closet and allow parents to make an informed decision. All children in our community deserve to be protected by a best practice decision, and best practice means immunising children, he said. Since the events of this week and Dr O'Sullivan's comments hit the press, he has copped the expected online abuse from the anti-vaccination community, including one particularly nasty commenter who brought Dr O'Sullivan's son into the argument. His son has been diagnosed with a progressive muscular dystrophy, which will tragically ultimately result in his death. The commenter sarcastically asked if there was a vaccine for his son's condition. Those of us familiar with the anti-vaccination movement will not be surprised by such a heartless, callous comment. When the Northern Rivers vaccination supporters heard about Dr O'Sullivan's brave statements, we wrote him an email of support and thanks, which we hope will go some way towards showing him that he has the pro-vaccination community right behind him. And that's all from me for this week. This has been Heidi Robertson from the Northern Rivers Vaccination Supporters, www.nrvs.info. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. Save the date, PsyCon is returning to Las Vegas for 2017. Today, you turned on your computer or your phone and Facebook told you that vaccines are an evil government plot. Twitter told you the sun is revolving around a flat earth. And the House Science Committee told you that climate change is nothing to worry about. Meanwhile, up is down, true is false... Oceania has always been at war with East Asia, and dogs and cats may in fact be living together. Enough already. It's time once again for the forces of reason and science to come together. Time for critical thinkers to connect, learn from each other, and sharpen their skills. Time for the leading lights of skepticism to share their wisdom and rally the troops. It's time for PsyCon 2017, back in Las Vegas. October the 26th to the 29th, join luminaries such as James the Amazing Randy, Richard Dawkins, Eugenie Scott, The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, Susan Gerbeck, Harriet Hall, Richard Wiseman, Carrie Poppy, Joe Nickel, and many, many more. The Master of Ceremonies is none other than George Harab. For the biggest Skeptics event of the year, returning triumphantly to the Excalibur Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, the City of Illusions, PsyCon 2017 will be packed with fascinating talks and presentations, dazzling entertainment and fun social events with fellow Skeptics. This October, get away from fake news and conspiracy theories filling up your news feeds at PsyCon. 2017, your alternative to alternative facts. For more information, visit www.csiconference.org. you on the story we brought you last week about the little boy who was taken by the authorities after his parents seemed not to be able to give him the proper care required, or maybe we should say unwilling to give him the proper medical attention required. This update comes to us from the news service of the ABC here in Australia at abc.net.au by Sarah White, published on the 22nd of May. Online petition calls for malnourished son of anti-vaxxer, 
to be returned home. Supporters of a prominent anti-vaxxer whose disabled and malnourished young son was taken by family services have launched an online petition to have him returned. Documents obtained by the ABC show the four-year-old boy, whose family lives in Newcastle, was severely underfed and was at imminent risk of serious harm. The mother of the boy has been feeding her son a cannabis oil and plant-based diet and missed crucial medical appointments, the documents show. Supporters say the boy's mother has been treated as a criminal for feeding him naturally and the petition has been signed by 23,000 people. Emergency physician Dr. Sularaji said the case highlights the dangers of when anti-vaxxer groups prey on families who are desperate. Quote, What I'm seeing is a vulnerable family who need a lot of support with a very disabled child who have somehow fallen into the arms of the anti-vaccination movement, end quote, Dr. Larassi said. She said a battle was now being waged between the family of the boy, who has cerebral palsy, and the public health system. Quote, it seems to be that the child is getting thinner and thinner, and the family seems to be rejecting the standard medical treatment that has kept him relatively healthy all these years, end quote, she said. Dr. Larachi said it was the online anti-vaxxer community that had fueled debate over the young boy's health. Quote, it's very easy, as you know, on social media to stir up hysteria. They're constantly urging people to share and spread messages around, end quote. A video filmed in the boy's home on Friday, seen by the ABC, shows police officers and family services officials waiting to take him away. Quote, I've spoken to the girls from the New South Wales Department of Family and Community Services. What they would like to see happen is the family puts the child in the back of the car, in quote, a police officer says in the video. The mother is heard saying in response, quote, You are and you will leave. You're not taking my child over my dead body, end quote. A spokesman from Family and Community Services would not comment on the case, only confirming there was a child safety incident on Friday. And that comes to us courtesy of the uh, ABC News Service, abc.net.au. Milí přátelé, zdraví vás Claire Kuhnenberg, spoluorganizátorka Evropského skeptického kongresu 2017. Letošní kongres se bude konat v Polské Vratislavi od 22. do 24. září a je mou ctí vás sem pozvat. Přijďte a poslechněte si příspěvky od osobností jako jsou James Randy, Susan Gerbic, Mark Linnis, Susan Blackmore, Scott Linfield a další. Pohovořte o tématech jako náboženství a věda, soudověda a média, paranormální všetřování a další. Pro koupy vstupenky a pro více informací běžte na euroskeptics.com.org a nebo nás najděte na Facebooku. Těšíme se na vás! Hello, dear skeptical friends. This is Claire Kleinberg, co-organizer of the European Skeptics Congress 2017. This year, the Congress will be held in Wroclaw, Poland on September 22nd to 24th, and it's my absolute pleasure to invite you to attend. Come and listen to talks by James Randi, Susan Gerbic, Mark Linnis, Susan Blackmore, Scott Lilienfeld, and others. Discuss topics like science and religion, pseudoscience and media, paranormal investigation, and more. To buy a ticket and to get more information about the Congress, go to euroskepticscon.org or find us on Facebook. See you there. And now, direct from the cafe at Australia's Science Channel, it's Brouhaha with Casey Harrigan. An iceberg the size of Kangaroo Island is dangling by a mere thread from the continent of Antarctica. 
about to be ripped off and set free. Well, by near thread, I mean 20 kilometers of ice, and by ripped off and set free, I mean gently drift off into the ocean. But its impending departure from mainland still prompts a lot of questions. Like, will we need to redraw our maps? Sort of. Maps that include ice shelves will need to be adjusted, but our records of the actual landmass of the continent are in good shape. Will the iceberg make sea levels rise? Not directly. But as the berg drifts away, we'll find out how stable the ice shelf it leaves behind really is. If sea levels do rise, it'll be because the glacier behind the iceberg is exposed and degrades more rapidly. And the biggest question of all, should we tow this iceberg to Australia and tap it for fresh water? No, we shouldn't. But over the years, this idea has really had a way of capturing people's imagination. And that's where it's going to stay. Realistically, we won't be buying overpriced bottles of fresh Antarctic iceberg water this summer. Yes, that was Casey Harrigan with this week's Brouhaha. And joining me on the line from Australia Science TV, it's Casey Harrigan in person. Hello, Casey. Hello, Richard. How are you? I'm really well. It's really nice to talk with you because I've seen... Me too. Thank you. I've, I've seen all the videos. The Brouhaha is a wonderful video series. And my listeners, of course, probably watch the videos, but certainly hear Brouhaha every week. It's you... Uh, yeah. giving little snippets of science together with Ben Lewis, of course, Kelly Wong and Tanya Meyer. Well, let's, let's little, uh, get to a little bit about you. What's your involvement exactly with the Australia Science Channel? Yeah, so um, as of uh, right now, I'm a contributing editor and producer. So um, I look after, on Australia Science Channel, I look after all things the body, so all things you know, health, medicine, wellness, even things like wearables, technology, that oh. sort of thing, anything to do with the human body. And I also look after culture. So I've got a real interest in science fiction um, and, you know, the connection of art and science, but then also, you know, society and science and politics and, and all those sort of social issues as well. So, um, yeah, so I kind of curate those channels, um, contribute to them as well, uh, and then I'm a producer. So I'm kind of sort of at the beck and call of, of um, myself and my colleagues to just make, you know, make as much great science content and, you know, show off as many science field stories um, as we can for Australia. And with the team there, the, the four of you doing the brouhaha, how do you, how do you choose your stories? I mean, do you, do you look at a range of stories that have come up in the week? Do all of you do that and think to yourself, I'll have this one or, or I'll do this one? Um, not exactly. I, I wonder what it would be like to be a fly on the, on the wall for some of our brouhaha um, <laughs> brainstorms. But um, basically, we just all get together wherever we are. We're either in the office or maybe we've just had a meeting and we, we all happen to be together. Um, and we just all throw ideas out. And sometimes it happens really fast. Sometimes something big has happened and we just go, we've just got to cover that. Um, there was one a little while ago, one of my favorites, and I couldn't stop laughing through the whole thing, was... Um, the sperm drug, drug smugglers, where yes. the scientists, like I'm laughing now, the scientists <laughs> put little backpacks on sperm, and we just went, that's a very ha-ha. That was such a no-brainer, super fast, wrote the script really quickly, all came together, and apart from once we got through one where I wasn't laughing so hard that it was unintelligible, then we were done. Um, but I tell you what, sometimes those conversations take a long time, and we go through a lot and lots of stories, and we throw things out, and we workshop it for a little while, and we just go, look, it's a great story, um, and we're all very interested in it, but it's just not a brouhaha, and then we, you know, move on to the next one, and then maybe we come back to one we've already talked about, and yeah, often those discussions are really quite long and grueling, but they're also really satisfying at the end, where you go, all that time, all those stories that were, um, you know, uh, false starts. Um, it can actually be really satisfying to get to the end and go, ah, oh, we've got it. We've got a really great story to bring people these weeks. So this week, so it's a it's a real mix anywhere between that's the one, let's do it, to you know <laughs> you need a bit of a stiff drink after the after the conversation <laughs> because it's just been quite grueling. So, but it's it's always fun, um, yeah, to, to have those discussions and just talk about all the weird and wonderful fancy stuff that's been happening. I bet it is. Now, for the people who just listen to you. Uh, via the uh, Skeptic Zone podcast, uh, I always say in the little introduction I've done is from, direct from the cafe. If you watch the videos, folks, of course, there's Casey and her friends Ben, Tanya, and, and Kelly. Uh, 
with the backdrop of an actual cafe and you're standing there presenting to camera with the people getting coffees behind you, what's that recording right. process like? Do you, do you have uh, an auto prompt or do you memorize it or how does that work? Um, yeah, so um, I don't know. It probably won't surprise too many people, but that's all green screen. So we go out um, and we shoot those backgrounds of different cafes. So they're all... They're all <laughs> They are the cafe at Australia Science Channel in terms of we've got our few local favourites, um, but unfortunately we don't have an on-site cafe. Um, so yeah, we've, we've got a green screen permanently set up. We've got a studio permanently set up. Um, we do have a teleprompter. Um, so we, yeah, we write our own script so that they're in our voice, um, and but we all do pitch in and have a have a quick read. Um, yeah, but basically once we're happy with the script, it's not too long. Um, it's got a few you know, maybe a few offbeat things in it, a few provocative things in it. Um, yeah, we just hit we just hit our studio, turn the lights on, turn the cameras on, um, and go for it and just really try and focus on giving the best and most authentic um performance is probably the wrong word because <laughs> we really are trying to just be ourselves. Yeah. Um but yeah, just give the most energetic um um kind of delivery that we can. So yeah, it's yeah, it's always a good good fun to just head down to the studio. On. Well, folks, if you haven't uh, if you haven't seen um, Casey and her friends actually perform, well, perform, deliver, present, I, I, I probably should say present. Maybe present. That's probably the best word. Um, well, there's a little yeah. bit. Of, there's a little bit of performance in all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, if you go to AustraliaScience.tv, you can you can see um, Bruhaha and lots of other things too, which the channel is doing, which uh, is is fantastic. And uh, the Skeptic Zone is very pleased to have a long association now with. Uh, what you're doing there through a week in science a few years ago all the way through now to brouhaha and uh, i hope one day i can visit uh, the australia science tv in person again and uh, we'll find a cafe i tell you what we'll find a that cafe would be great. And we'll, perfect. we'll yeah. do and we'll have a real brouhaha then but for now <laughs> sounds great for Love now it. casey wonderful to, to chat with you and uh, please give uh, our regards to all your fellow presenters who do such a, a wonderful job. Certainly well, thanks, Richard. For more brouhaha and Australian science, head for www.australiascience.tv. Calling all Skeptic Zone listeners. Do you live in or near Glasgow, or are you planning to visit sometime? Then you're in luck, because Glasgow Skeptics have got your Monday nights sorted. We're committed to filling up every available Monday night with talks on science and scepticism. Past speakers include Eugenie Scott, Jerry Coyne, Michael Marshall, Nate Phelps, Tom and Cecil from Cognitive Dissonance, PZ Myers, Richard Wiseman, AC Grayling, Noah Heath and Eli from The Scathing Atheist, Simon Singh, Rebecca Watson, and a multitude of local academics and sceptics. There's literally nothing better you can do on a Monday night in Glasgow that doesn't involve taking your clothes off. So come join us. We've also got a vibrant online community. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and get involved with the discussion. Glasgow Sceptics. Self-help for your brain. Coming to you from the middle, the center, the uh, epicenter, ground zero of mind, body, spirit, or mind, body, wallet, as we call it. Of course, I'm here with these stranger things down under group. Um, we're milling around. It's really crowded. Mind, body, wallet is absolutely crowded this year. Really, I think because it's moved back into the center of the city from out in the suburbs where it was, and this year they've made it free. So a lot of people, a lot of more people are here uh, than would normally be here. So the, the rows, it's quite a big area, and all the rows are absolutely crowded, They're like a little human traffic jam. Uh, we're passing lots of really good stuff. It's worth coming to Mind Body Wallet for the fantastic stuff. Trish from our group even bought some incredibly delicious ginger beer. 
and there's some stuff, there's some lo- lovely food and all sorts of things. There's Alethea's here with me, Trish, Lara and Jessica are all milling around. Lots of jewellery to buy, of course. But we have been passing things like earthing. You can... Well, I'm not sure what the idea is. You, you make connection with the earth through bare feet or special mats that you have to buy and, and balances you somehow. We pass various Reiki people. Uh, what's this? A vacuum blender? Yeah. Lots of food here. New Oh, that looks nice. So, oh, it's a bookstore. I was passing the live demonstration of cooking at the moment. So what a mixture Mind Body Wallet is every year. What a mixture. But that doesn't excuse the, uh, the anti-science, the rampant anti-science, the questionable medical products and so on that's, that uh, we can find. Oh, well, we'll, we will press on. Goodness me, the science, the incredible science we've seen here. Incredible is one word to say. New Chinese health center we're just passing by. Self-adhesive moxa, a plant wormwood, mugwort, can change your future. Now, that's very interesting. Uh, we've lost some of our party because they've got sort of waylaid at various stands selling weird water and... Um, spinal checks and spinal taps and I don't know what uh, I've somehow made it almost through to the other end with Lara we uh, stop and look at some of the stands along the way it's funny smells in the air, incense and smoke and I don't know what's going on oh there is a cafe, we've discovered the cafe we were looking for that before so there is a cafe, I hope they sell chips <clears throat> We've got one more row to go, but we might... Uh, yeah, we'll go around this corner. So many people here. Mostly having a good time, I think. Um, there's Roxanne, uh, an old friend of mine, so to speak. Feng Shui Laws with Roxanne. There she is. I see the same people here year after year. Wellbeing magazine. I think I'll grab one of these and we'll carry on. It's a welcome break here at Mind Body Wallet. I'm with Jessica and Lara. We've, we've discovered coffee, Lara, which is very welcome at the moment because we have to wash out the, the water. The uh, what was it alkaline water or something? The, uh, no, there was five different types of water, Richard. They had an electrolysis machine. It cost close to six thousand dollars, was it? Yeah. Which apparently everybody in Japan has. Yes. I'm just trying they they to clean their floors with it. Yeah. Yeah, and they split the water into. Uh, basically, it turns it into an acid and an alkali simultaneously. Although, if you don't want it to come out too strong, you can just remove this slightly dubious-looking tray, which apparently puts some chemicals in but actually doesn't. I don't know. They were, it was, they were contradicting themselves every couple of seconds. And uh, the references were constantly looking up on YouTube. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. This YouTube is the definitive place to go for <laughs> science education, which he needs to do because, honestly, it was really winding me up the way he's talking about H2 diatomic hydrogen which is just hydrogen. That's just hydrogen gas. And he said that there's bubbles. But then he said dissolved. If you dissolve the diatomic hydrogen, you basically got H+. You've got ions dissolved in solution. They're two different things. Um, and he kept, yeah, I mean, he kept saying it wasn't dangerous. But the pH was so high and so low that I really think it would be. And Trish seemed to think it would be too. Yeah, Trish did too. But I doubt the machine does anything that, uh, that it's claimed or the claims being made. And Jessica, what have you discovered? What joys have you discovered here? I went past something that seems to claim it can change your DNA, which, interesting, unlikely, though. Um, but mostly, as always, the crystals are the best part for me. They're so beautiful. They don't do any of the stuff they claim to do. I bought some um, iron pyrite, an iron pyrite sort of egg-looking thing for a friend. I thought it was very pretty, but it claims to be an excellent energy shield. I don't know what that means. Shield against energy. <laughs> um, uh, stimulate the flow of ideas. Helps with planning boosts self-worth and accelerates mental activity. I could do with some of that right now while I finish my assignment later today. It's all worth it, you see. But, wow, what a big turnout. I mean, I, I've been coming to this funny fair for many, many years, and I think this is one of the biggest turnouts I've ever seen. 
So there you go. There are people. There are people who are interested in the new age still. Mm. Honestly, the, the the turnout's so big. It's almost a little bit stressful. There's so many people here. Like I, I feel like this is supposed to be where you go to feel really calm and chill, or I don't know something positive, good energy, blah blah blah. But mostly, it's just a lot of people bumping into my shoulders. <laughs> yeah, a lot of bumping into people today. Well, we'll finish our coffees, and we might be able to find Alethea and Trish who are lost somewhere in no, this they, they're doing throng. An, Where are they? They're doing a hearing test. They're doing a he- I didn't know that. But I don't know if it's a pseudoscience hearing test or a real one that it's just, you know, come along here for the business. I might be wrong, but it looked like the hearing test was legitimate, but they were trying to sell something which could improve your hearing. I might be wrong on that. We'll have, we'll have to go and have a look. We'll find out soon. Well, you've heard Escape from Alcatraz. We've escaped from Mind Body Wallet. Oh, hello. Lara's brought me a lovely dessert here. A... Oh, let me open this up. We're just sitting here in Darling Harbour in some of the cafes. and oh, It's a little caramel tart. It looks amazing. Merry Christmas indeed. So, Trish and Alethea, you left us to go to hear a fascinating talk. What was that like? It was called The Art of Oracle Reading. And... Everyone was napping. There were like at least six or seven people actually asleep. And we were struggling. Mm. It was such a content-free talk Mm. um, by a very nice lady with a soothing voice. She was gorgeous as well. (laughs) She was absolutely gorgeous, but you still just think, oh, can you you not? (laughs) With with this very hypnotic quality to her voice that made it very hard to stay awake during the nothing she was saying for a lot. Yeah. Everyone in there was already a witch of some sort. They already had an oracle card deck, didn't they? They already had altars in their home. Oh, it that was, was the assumption. That was the assumption of, of what she was talking about. Um, except, that, us. except us. I didn't realise there was a difference between tarot and oracle, but it seems like there's a little bit of a... Uh, tarot seems uh, yeah, to yeah. be regarded as being darker, doesn't it? Like, is tarot it? is dark and evil. Some people think it has a nasty energy. I wasn't aware, but there you go. Because tarot has death cards and they don't always mean death remember it could be the change of a career or what was the uh, the other thing they talk about oh, oh the death of a bad habit that was one thing that i've seen brought up mm. see it's all good it's all good well i'm i'm pleased that i i said i wouldn't come back to mind body wallet this year but i did and i'm pleased i did actually it's recharged the battery somewhat so would you generally recommend mind body wallet i think every skeptic should go at least once to engage with what woo is and I think that's why we've come Um, but apart from a lot of woo and there was a lot of woo Mm -hmm. there's also some genuinely nice little stores doing food and we've got our hearing tested by a legit hearing testing company I got some amazing ginger stuff like yeah me too yeah, is it, in fact, I think looking that, that's my uh, lemon lime and ginger drink. It's, it's lovely stuff. So yeah, I think the general consensus is skeptics go to a mind body wallet. Absolutely, but it learns so much not only about what's going on, but about yourself as well. Like some people can go along and just be silent and just listen, and some people can be a bit antagonistic. And it's all about testing yourself, seeing whether you're capable of being a. Well, I pretended to be vegan for a good five seconds i'll have you know (laughs) well look thank you uh stranger things down under for having me uh along with you for your mind body wallet experience and i look forward to the that's all right i look forward to the next stranger things adventure next weekend oh ghosts right Hi, this is Ben Radford, and this is Pasquale Romero from the Squaring the Strange podcast. Every week, my co-host and I cast a skeptical eye on a different topic. Monsters, ghosts, demons, mysteries, and even current events are dissected and discussed with a fun, unscripted, and skeptical take that you're sure to enjoy. Find us at squaringthestrange.com, iTunes, or on your favorite podcast platform. Here's another update from the Australian Skeptics website at skeptics.com.au, written by Tim Mendham. He's a busy man. Published on the 23rd of May 2017. 
Experimental Webster Technique Approved by Chiropractic Australia Chiropractic is in the news again. Or should that be still in the news? The ABC Radio National's The World Today program ran a piece on chiropractors who are still advertising their provision of the Webster Technique to pregnant women in defiance of warnings from the Chiropractic Board and the College of Obstetricians to stop it. The Webster Technique is used by chiropractors to, quote, adjust, end quote, the spines of pregnant women to, quote, assure normal delivery, end quote, and to prevent breech birth caused by, quote, intrauterine constraint, end quote. It involves turning the baby within the womb, according to the website Chirobase. Quote, this dubious treatment is based on the equally dubious theory that vertical subluxations can cause malfunction in the uterus by putting pressure on spinal nerves. Reliance on the Webster technique during the final weeks of pregnancy can endanger both the mother and the child. End quote. In his interview with Radio National, the National President of Chiropractic Australia, Rod Bonello, said that this practice by chiropractors is OK because the Webster technique is an, quote, experiment, end quote. The Webster technique, quote, should be regarded as an experimental technique, end quote, he said. Quote, there are many treatments in healthcare across all health professions where the evidence is either very thin or non-existent and yet practitioners still see value in this technique. End quote. Later in the interview, Manello said that the problem is that chiropractors have not updated their advertising websites. Last year, campaigner Ken McLeod alerted the Australian Health Practitioner Regulation Agency and the Chiropractic Board of Australia to more than one hundred websites advertising the technique. He says it's not just an issue of the practitioners not updating their website. Quote, it's that the board doesn't know and doesn't care if the chiropractors are performing the Webster technique as long as they don't admit to it on their websites. Imagine a major airline saying, we don't know if our pilots are flying below the lowest safe altitudes and don't care as long as they don't talk about it. Manello's comments were flippant and possibly dangerous, end quote, McLeod says. Quote, his experiment is outside of strictly controlled clinical trials. There's no control group, no ethics approval, no adverse reactions register in his experiment, and the chiropractic board has never implemented the required adverse reactions register for chiropractors. Further, chiropractors are advertising the Webster technique as a safe and effective technique, not as an experiment. This brings in Australian consumer law as chiropractors and the board are engaging in misleading and deceptive conduct, end quote. McLeod says he is yet to hear back from the AHPRA or CBA. Quote, another reason for a Senate inquiry into chiropractic, end quote, he insists. And that update comes to us from the website of Australian Skeptics, skeptics.com. Thank you for listening to the Skeptic Zone, and you'll notice that. Uh, there are certainly a lot of sceptical conventions and conferences and uh, all sorts of things coming up, uh, f well, for the rest of the year, everywhere from Poland to New York to uh, Las Vegas to right here in Sydney with the Australian Skeptics National Convention later in November. More news about that, of course, uh, over the next few months. And in a few weeks, I'll be uh, looking forward to seeing all my friends and Skeptic Zone fans at the uh, Northeast Conference of Science and Skepticism. I have never been to New York before, so I'm really looking forward to that. And lucky me, I get to spend a couple of days in Connecticut before the event. And uh, here's something uh, as an aside about me. I'm actually very interested in American history. I find it quite fascinating um, going back to the revolution, pre-revolution, and some of the characters, the founding fathers, and uh, the goings-on of that time period. 
So uh, it'll be really interesting for me to be um, sort of amongst some of the uh, the early history of the United States. But then again, I find uh, historical things pretty interesting in general. And I must say, as the years have gone by, the access that we all have to uh, information, regardless of what it is, but in my case, the um, finding out about history is just increased so many fold. It's, it's ridiculous. Good old YouTube is awash with quality documentaries on uh, on history. Really good stuff. BBC documentaries, stuff from PBS in the States. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, there's a lot of rubbish on YouTube, of course, a lot of conspiracy theory, um, rat bags and nutcases and, and whatever, but there's so much good stuff for education. Um, I sometimes wonder what it would have been like if I had access to all this stuff when I was going through high school. Maybe I would have done better. Before I leave you, I noticed that uh, there's a new Bunga Bunga podcast out by Maynard and Tim Ferguson at maynard.com.au. They record that in the Madame Fru Fru Cafe in Glebe, Glebe Point Road. This is not an ad for the cafe, but uh, I often find myself there uh, to do work on the Skeptic Zone or write reports or whatever, having a wonderful coffee. It's a, it's a nice little cafe uh, with with friendly uh, staff and always lots of laughs and it's great to catch up with Maynard at the Madame Fru Fru Cafe. Maybe I should make this a commercial. In fact, one of my uh, one of my uh, little pleasures in life is to go there and have a nice flat white coffee, and they always make wonderful coffee art for me, and a couple of slices of peanut butter toast. Oh yeah, well I'm going to think about that for the next week. And but until then, <laughs> this is Richard Saunders signing off from Sydney, Australia. You've been listening to the Skeptic Zone podcast. Visit our website at www.skepticzone.tv for contacts, an archive of all episodes since 2008, and our online store. Please support the Skeptic Zone by following us on Twitter at Skeptic Zone, liking us on Facebook, and leaving a review on iTunes. You can also show your support by subscribing via PayPal for as little as 99 cents a week. The Skeptic Zone is an independent production. The views and opinions expressed on The Skeptic Zone are not necessarily those of Australian Skeptics Inc. or any other skeptical organisations.